Hey, what's up you guys? Shark Mr. Prime here, doing another Marvel Legends action figure review on the Marvel Legends Thor Love and Thunder Korg Build-A-Figure Waves King Valkyrie. Try to get Marvel Legends, you can do so it. Such your feelings, you know it to be true. Dark Side Toys is a store for you! Link below. And while you're down there, I ask you to please hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And it's King Valkyrie. Not used to calling gorgeous women kings, but okay. And on the side, we get a nice image of Valkyrie. Uh, same reversed image on the back of the packaging over here. And then there's a read-up over there. If you want to read it, go ahead and pause it right now. There's the other figures from the wave. Then we get a spot varnished broken meal there on the very top. And not much more at the bottom. So let's get to it and crack this thing open. Looking pretty good so far. Slice. Here we go. We can figure out right over here. We get the Korg accessories right over there. And then we have her sword. And wow. Ooh, the hair looks really nice. Yeah, man. Not looking too bad. All right. Let's get this figure back on the rotating base. <laughs> And here's Valkyrie back on the rotating base. And it's a pretty good looking figure. There's a lot that I like over here. Some dislikes that I'll talk about, but let's get a closer look at her one accessory and then we'll take a closer look at the figure. So I wish we got interchangeable hands with this figure. It seems to be a theme throughout the wave, but yeah, we get the Build-A-Figure piece and Dragon Fang, which actually looks really good. Much improved version compared to the last one that we saw, which I actually still like for you know, this kind of translucent blue teal kind of look that I see right here. But this one has this added gunmetal feature with the paint, or it looks like it's a gunmetal gray with the shiny teal painted over it. And I like that effect. It looks pretty neat. And I like that we're getting more details right over here. I also like that it's a firmer sword. It's not all soft and wobbly like this one right over here. So yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> So I don't have a whole lot of pictures to show off of Tessa Thompson in Love and Thunder, but I'm trying my best over here, and I think it looks like Tessa Thompson. I don't know if it's my favorite Tessa Thompson head sculpt. Here's a comparison from the last... Oh, there goes her cape. But yeah, they both look pretty good, but the flesh tone isn't the same. We have a darker flesh tone right here uh, from the end game, And then you can see that the hair is obviously different, and then comparing it to the basic figure right here... Uh, you could see like the quality of the plastic and everything's just a whole lot better on the Marvel Legend. It's not all super glossy and stuff. And I think the flesh tone has a much more natural look. Ooh, got a little weird uh, bump right over there. Let's see if I could apply some heat to it and get rid of that. Looks like it went away. All right, cool. Yeah, I feel like there's this little gap in her mouth right here that kind of throws me off. I don't know. Looks like she's almost talking, but not quite. I love how the hair came out. Holy crap. The detail in the sculpt right here and the touches of blue. This looks great. I really like this quite a bit. So yeah, really cool job with the hair right there. And then I like the design for the whole suit. Like, I don't know what to tell you if I like uh, the end game version or, you know, the last one more uh, or this one more king version, end game version. I really like them both. But I just really like the different silver, black, and white pieces that we're seeing over here. It just looks badass to me. I don't know. There's something about it. I just really like the design of it. Love seeing the pinless double jointed elbows. And I'm happy to see that these are different arms. So they're not just reusing the same arms over and over again. You can even see that this looks a little bit weird when you bend them. You know, I'll go over the articulation a little bit. But yeah, there's something a little bit extra long right over here in the elbow for this particular figure. A lot of glossy black on the figure. And I think it looks really good. You can see the sculpted detail detail right here. These will flare out on you. I had to heat them up to get them to come back down. So if you have the legs, you know, splayed out and opposed for a long period of time, it'll stick out where you just heat it up and it'll go right back. You can see the detail right here with those studs on there. There's the very back of the figure, not seeing any real paint underneath the cape and no butt cheeks sculpted or anything like that. Ew, oh, gross. Why would you want that? And then right here on the side, you can see a lot of straps and I love all the glossy black man and then the touches of silver right over here look really cool too very happy to see that just stands out really well makes the figure pop some we get a knife right over here that you cannot remove ah Hasbro that makes me so upset I'm oh, gee, I, I've said it many times I hate it when they add accessories that you can't actually use ah, it's frustrating anyway 
Boots look good right down here as well, and you get peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So we get some good articulation over here, even though we don't get a disc hinge in the neck, which I prefer, but yeah, you can see that she will look up uh, just the tiniest bit. You can get her to look down quite a bit. You get good head pivoting over there, and of course you can turn the head side to side, and then you don't have butterfly joints. It does shift a little bit, but wish we had butterfly joints. Shoulders will move outward and up that far, which is impressive, I like that. And they'll move down all the way. You could rotate a full 360, you get the bicep swivel, you get the Endless double jointed elbows, which again I said look a little bit weird on this figure, but I'm glad to have it. Uh, both hands turn side to side and hinge up and down. You get a diaphragm joint that turns side to side. You get some good pivoting. By the way, the white paint on this thing feels very solid. Uh, there's a tiny little nick over here and a splotch missing right over there, but for the most part, I really like that white paint. She'll crunch forward that much. You get a little bit of a gap over here, but not that much of a gap. And she'll bend back, and again, you can see some gap badge right there. So not not in favor of having a lot of gap right there, but it, uh, it's not the worst, but wish it wasn't there. Anyway, great pivoting side to side. No waist cut on the figure. Uh, you can get the hips to move outward that far. She'll kick forward this much and back a bit. Upper thigh cut. Double jointed knees. Looking pretty good. And then no boot rotation. Really wish we had boot rotation on these figures. Like, we really do need it. That's going to be my next ongoing complaint, Hasbro, is we need calf rotation on the figures because it gets awkward posing the figure around without it. Ankles move down. They do move up and she she has beautiful ankle pivot. It'd be even more beautiful ankle pivot with the boot rotation though. Now to measure out this Tessa Thompson figure, you could see that she is standing just a bit under six and a half inches tall. Then for a Thor Love and Thunder Valkyrie figure comparison, you can see we have our Marvel Legends Valkyrie, and then here is the basic action figure Valkyrie, which has two swords. Are we gonna see Valkyrie with two swords in the movie? I don't remember seeing that. You can see she obviously has silver right there on the chest instead of white. I really like the strong white paint over here. Even though there's minor, minor blemishes, it's like nice thick coating of white over that so it doesn't look like it's cheap or anything so I dig that. Then for your Marvel Legends Valkyrie figure comparison you can see we have the Thor Ragnarok Valkyrie and then here's our Avengers Endgame Valkyrie and then here's our Love and Thunder Valkyrie and she has gotten shorter and lighter in skin color over the years. I don't know how but somehow she has. I think I'm liking this figure the most right over here out of the three of them. I don't know which one is your favorite but I don't know I think I like this the most yeah. I do. And then to compare the King Valkyrie figure next to the other figures from this wave that I've already reviewed, we have Mighty Thor and Ravager Thor. And then here's King Valkyrie next to your average six inch scale figure, we have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider-Man. Dude, you are the hottest king I have ever seen. Unless you're not a dude, then sorry. I mean, or unless, why are you not a queen? I don't understand anything anymore. Words don't have meaning. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, show some love to the channel by simply clicking that like button. And if you're new here, hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And a big thank you to the people that support this content via Tron and membership. Support goes a long way. If you're interested in the perks, check it out. Link in the description below. And this figure looks really cool. I said it so many times already. I like the design of this figure. I also really like the cape. I didn't talk about the cape too much in this video, but I really do like it. And I think it's a cool figure overall. I'm super happy to see the pinless double jointed elbows. So the new tech just makes me really happy. And I think overall, this is a more poseable figure and easier to work with compared to the Endgame Valkyrie, except for the head sculpt. Because with the Endgame Valkyrie, we had a hair sculpt and a neck hinge that allowed her to look up. So yeah, there's parts where there's a little bit more range of movement with that one with the head, but overall we get more articulation with this one. However, uh, as far as design goes, I think I like the white and gold suit more. Let me know what you guys think. I don't know, but for me, at the price point, around 25 to 28 bucks, I'm going to give this King Valkyrie figure a sud rating of... It's not so bad. My opinion of this figure is definitely going to change after I see the movie. It, it always does, you know what I mean? You gotta see these characters in context to know how much you're gonna really enjoy the figure, right? Right? Anyway, let me know what you guys think. If you wanna see a photo gallery of images and the latest in Marvel news, you can find it all over at MarvelousNews.com. And if you wanna stay in touch with me on social media, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok, and whatnot. And I will catch you guys later. Peace. Crispy. Hey, I'm sure I'm Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.